may have heard of a little company called Uber. Um, hackers broke into Uber and we found that out just within the past uh, week or two, I think just last week. And what did the hacker do? They gained administrative access to key servers, also to cloud platforms. They crawled through Uber's network and then posted screenshots, both to their internal employee Slack channel, bragging about it, as well as the hacker's Telegram channel. And this is not like the most super elite, sophisticated attack, is it, Matt? No, no, not, not really. Uh, much like most of the other ones, this came through a, a pretty standard method of entry. Yeah, the hackers um, started off with a personal device. So there's a contractor. Uber has put out a statement saying they likely infected someone's personal device with malware. And clearly that personal device was used to access the corporate network. Sound familiar? This happens all the time, especially since COVID. Lots of people are working remotely. We've seen a huge increase in BYOD. And you don't have as much control over people's personal devices, so they're more likely to get infected with malware. When this person's device got infected with malware, their username and password were stolen and sold on the dark web. Now, again, that is quite common. Um, we often see initial access brokers just getting initial access. They're specialists, and then they sell it off to the hacking group that's actually going to use it. So another a type of attacker purchased that and tried to log in over and over and over, and guess what? MFA blocked it. Good job, MFA. Okay, MFA is blocking them, but the hackers aren't going to give up. They start, in their own words, spamming the employee with, with push authentication. So here's the employee. Um, I believe I heard rumors it was Duo, right, Matt? Yeah. Um, yeah, here's the employee using Duo, and they're seeing authentication requests over and over saying, hey, is this you trying to log in for an hour? Then the criminal contacts the, the uh, contractor on WhatsApp and says they're from Uber IT. And honestly, guys, we have seen this in case after case after case recently, where they're actually reaching out to people's personal phones. They know where you work, and they're saying that, that they are in IT. Um, and so then he, he said, if you, if, you, if you want the push authentication attempts to stop, you need to just hit accept. And he did. Um, I also really liked this little statement here uh, where they're talking about the general process. There's no limit placed on the amount of calls that can be made. So some people have voice uh, calls that get made to them for the 2FA. If you call the employee 100 times at 1 a.m. while he's trying to sleep, he will more than likely accept it, right? There's a, there's a limit. People literally get tired. Matt, do you want to tell us about what the hackers did once they were inside Uber systems? Yeah, so the the path they actually took through the network was kind of interesting. This isn't, uh, and this is something that we we talk about in terms of regular, you know, data storage hygiene and you know basic practices that really help to not have you wind up in a situation like this. Uh, once the employer, once the uh, attacker actually made it into the system, they were able to scan the contents of multiple shared folders inside of Uber's network. And inside some of those folders, they found things like PowerShell scripts. And inside those PowerShell scripts, they had hard-coded credentials for things like their psychotic privileged access management system, which allowed the attacker to gain access to not just the, uh, the system itself, but everything it contained. This included access keys for things like AWS, for Google Workspace, for Slack, for a bunch of other things. They essentially had the keys to the kingdom at this point because they were able to take out that centralized credential and management source. Uh, and the, the way that they were able to do that, again, was just a simple misstep on a program or developer or IT professionals part, looking to make their job easier, automate something with a script, but leaving those hard-coded credentials and keys in there. Uh, this well, is something I, that most online code repositories scan for automatically at this point, but you need to do inside your network as well. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, as a pen tester myself, um, we see this all the time in organizations' networks uh, when we're actually doing a pen test. It's hard to find and to squish every single one of those passwords, but as we're gonna see, it's really important. And from there, the hackers just jump right to the cloud. We see this all the time where they just expand to your cloud systems. They took screenshots of Uber's um, Slack workspaces, administrative interfaces for AWS, G Suite, and many other systems. So it's a PR disaster for Uber. Again, the investigation is ongoing, so we'll see what comes out of it. But Matt, tell us a little bit about what the solution is. Yeah, so one of the biggest solutions that we've uh, we've seen as it applies to Uber's case anyway is the implementation of zero trust technology. And this is something that's becoming a lot more common in uh, in businesses. Over 74% of businesses at this point have taken some steps towards implementing zero trust as 
uh, an overall policy or protocol inside of their network. And, and really, it's good. What we want to look for with zero trust, though, is basically a, a assuming that something is going to go wrong and our perimeter will get breached. You will get hacked. Uh, you will have someone in your network without authorization. So what do we do at that point? Well, the idea is to reduce the blast radius of what they're actually able to hit. And Zero Trust accomplishes that through a continuous verification of you in the network. We don't just get to authenticate with a password once. We have to maintain things like the correct device access, the correct behavioral access, the correct password, the correct MFA prompt. There's a lot of things that go into it. But really, it's basically uh, it, it's looking at verifying whether or not you are who you say you are and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing at any one specific point in time, not just once, not just at the end, but continuously. With Zero Trust specifically, we, there are a lot of solutions out there that work out really well. There are things like SecureAuth, which offers a really nice Zero Trust solution. Uh, it's going to be about a dollar per user per month to start off with. There's Ping Identity, there's Keeper, and a lot more. Uh, they offer digital fingerprinting and a lot of other great uh, great features. So something to, to look out for. Zero Trust is where we kind of need to go. So another development in the Uber case um, is that uh, shortly after their hack, they suddenly started hiring more people. And unfortunately, the internet gave them some some hell for this. Um, but it's very common in the wake of a security breach for organizations to listen, to start to identify those gaps. I mean, in the best organizations, it's a learning experience. And so you do see um, frequently that organizations will staff up after a breach. Now, ideally, we want to be investing before in, in uh, staff, but that can be hard to do in today's job market. Um, a survey of organizations found that 62% do not have sufficient staffing on their security team. And if your security team is not sufficiently staffed, if you do have that skills shortage, your data breaches are much more likely to cost more. Um, that's for a few reasons. You know, if you don't have enough staff to respond to alerts, you're, it's likely going to take you longer to respond to incidents. You may not have time to handle all of the little pieces um, of the response effort, and so it ends up costing more. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. And I'm Matt Duran, Director of Training and Incident Response for LMG Security. If you have any questions, please reach out at any time. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us at info at lmgsecurity.com, find us on LinkedIn, and follow us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.